Good morning, I'm Chris Fox, and today we're heading back to the world of cliché. So this is the third video in the How to Plot Your Novel from Scratch series, and we're delving into some of the notes that I've taken over the last couple of weeks. So we're now four weeks into this project. You can see the grand total I've spent on the Scrivener document is about two hours, no more than that, I'd say, and then just a few hours of thinking. So it takes a while time-wise for me to, to get an outline ready, but I don't do a lot of focused work in one day on it. So it just takes, you know, time, I guess, for it to germinate and, and for me to, to really mull over ideas. And that often leads to fairly big twists in what I'm intending to do with the story. And you're going to see that today, where in the process of creating things and world building, I actually found myself a new protagonist. And that's what we're going to go over mostly today. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the meat of the video. Okay, so as you can see, the first document that I fleshed out was the machine. And I don't have a lot, just a paragraph, but this really encapsulates a lot. So there was a lot of thinking that went into this, and it started with the comments that you guys left last week, thank you so much, uh, uh, for the video, and, and really grew from there. And what I decided is, what if the machine is sort of a little bit like Westworld, where it is designed to create this entertainment area that people can come, and in this case it's a fantasy setting, you know, and it's since become post-apocalyptic because the society that built this machine collapsed. And so now you've got a mix of fantasy and post-apocalyptic elements in this little world that's still trying to exist and the machine is still trying to keep it going long after that civilization is gone. Next, this is kind of a random idea that I just dropped in and may or may not get used. I correspond with a guy that I laughingly call Reader Rick because we're both fans of the TV show Rick and Morty and he's one of my readers. So I figured it'd be fun to make him a shopkeeper. This may or may not make it in, but this is an example of a note that I just drop into the document, and maybe this gets plucked when I'm doing the plotting, or maybe it gets ignored and I don't use it at all, but I drop these sorts of things in as a sort of research. I decided that the ominous Latin phrase would need an enemy organization, and they're going to be called the order of, let me add this in right now, programmers will think this is funny, dollar sign placeholder. So I, I'm going to make it look like a variable, like it's something that wasn't fleshed out by the machine. It was supposed to put the order of something and instead it's basically got the order of blank. And I'm going to have them be probably the enemies of ominous Latin phrase, OLP for short. But that's all I know about them. I may or may not use them. It's just an idea that I had. But the rest of the documents, as you're going to see, transform the plot entirely. And I didn't expect this at all, but this is a great example of what happens when you start just having ideas. So I decided that one of the fantasy elements could be a tribe of goblins that lives maybe north of where our protagonist is going to be. And I decided that Bog was going to be the name of the goblin that, that was part of the story because Bog is a goblin that I had created and used in a campaign like 20 years ago when I was running Dungeons and Dragons. And this image incidentally is a Dungeons and Dragons image. It belongs to Paizo for their game Pathfinder and is how they picture goblins. So it's going to serve as a reference point for me until I can get some of my own artwork created. But in any case, Bog was great. I, I loved him and I decided, oh, great, I'll bring him back and I'll, I'll use him in this story since I've never really written him into fiction. And I decided that Bog's whole goal is to become a boss. In his society, you start off as a minion. Then you maybe can get the henchman trope. And if you're very lucky, you work your way up to mini boss and it pretty much stops there. But a few people can eventually become a, a boss. And then above that, of course, is Dark Lord. And as I was thinking about this, I really started liking the idea of Bog. It, it amused me greatly. And, and I was thinking, you know, maybe he would make a better protagonist. So I thought more about him. I thought, ooh, what, what if I titled the book The Dark Lord Bog and I made Bog like this funny goblin, the main character. And I started, you know, talking to, to my sister and my wife and, and a few other people. And I mentioned this and they all said pretty much the same thing, which is the Bog is funny to you, Chris. But it's not funny to other people, and so the Dark Lord Bog is not going to be a comedic title. You need to change that. And so I decided, well, what if I made Bog Bert? And what if the title of the book is The Dark Lord Bert? Now, I may or may not end up using this, but this is the plot that I've come up with so far, as you'll see in the next document. Basically, what if Bog joined a group of evil adventurers, and they all want to become the Dark Lord? Now, Bog doesn't. He just wants to take the mini-boss trope for his village. He's not interested in being the Dark Lord. What if, through a series of hijinks, he became the Dark Lord? Wouldn't that be funny? And then along the way, I could still have a well-actually character do all the other things I was thinking of. Just instead of a moisture farmer, my main character wants to become a mini-boss. 
Uh, and I thought that was a lot funnier and, and it, it, it excites me a lot more. So it, it's something I'm much more likely to write. And the advantages of this is that I'm still riffing off of tropes and doing this whole world of cliche, but I also now have an original story. And so I started thinking about that and I wrote up about the Goblin Village. So if you, if you want to, you can pause this and, and read it. And, and basically, I'll sum it up for you, those of you who don't want to do so, if you're maybe watching this on your phone. Bert lives in a goblin village called Paradise, and they call it Paradise because it's built on the human dump. Humans dump their garbage there, and goblins subsist off of that garbage, and everything they have is built from that garbage. And Bert is kind of an engineer among goblins. He does things that most goblins don't do, and, you know, there's always these little inventions he's working on. And one day he makes an invention that is basically a, a kind of a primitive catapult. It's a slingshot that'll fire a flying device over the wall of the city to where the machine is, where people can't normally get to, because the wall is all, you know, it's smooth and it's super high and, and no one can get to the actual machine itself. And his mini boss decides to try it and fires himself into this village. And so now Bert's problem is his village is not a mini boss and that will get him into the main plot. And so that's kind of my, my take on where this could go overall. And, and then, you know, maybe a day later, I, I started thinking about kind of how that could work. And I wrote my little Ocean's Eleven document here, which is, do I want a theme that's kind of like Ocean's Eleven or maybe Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn, where you've got sort of the group planning the heist? And in this case, they're breaking into the machine to get the Dark Lord trope. And that might be the route that I end up going. I think I could make it pretty funny. But anyway, you can see this is all the work that I've done over the last couple of weeks. In total, it was probably several hours of thinking and then maybe less than an hour to transcribe these documents. So it's still all taking place in my head, and I'm going to need one more probably video to flesh this out and actually have a real outline here. But you can see how I've been sitting with this now for four weeks. I had the idea, I thought about it, it's growing, and meanwhile I'm still working on the Magitech Chronicles. I've just finished up Spellship, I've now plotted out War Mage, which is the fourth book in that series. I've been working on plot gardening, so I've got all these other projects that I'm working on, but this is just sort of happening in the background. The beauty of this is that when this gets to be front and center, when this is the project that I'm ready to write, I'll have spent maybe two months working on it and, you know, thinking of characters and getting more artwork and, and sort of really fleshing the plot out. So that's how it's possible for me to write the novels as quickly as I do. It's not I just sit down and crank out a novel. It's I'm quietly in the background allowing these ideas to germinate, plot gardening. And sort of, you know, taking that and then building a plot over time so that when I finally sit down to write, I'm ready to do so and do it very, very quickly. Anyway, I hope this is useful. If it is, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the new direction. Let's riff off it some more, come up with some more ideas and keep seeing how we can make this better and think of new characters. And, you know, we can sort of watch it grow together. Anyway, like I said, I do need to get back to the writing. I'm working on the final editing for Spellship. That's probably going to go live either next week or the week after. So I got some work to do. All right, guys, I will see you next week.